During the summer, several media outlets claimed China was increasing the production rate for its J-20 fighter, its most advanced stealthy fighter jet. Some went so far to say the production rate reached 120 airframes per year. This video will explore the actual likely J-20 production figures, the overall fleet figures and put them all in a proper context. Even if they are as high as it's sometimes claimed, just how much do such numbers matter? And could China be a threat even if it indeed has hundreds of J-20s? Is J-20 worth producing in such huge numbers? Hey, what's this? Pink of plushies are back in stock? Yes, the second batch is in indeed. And you too can take your own bank of adjutant home. If you want one for yourself or as a gift, do check out our Crowdmate store. The link is available below in the video description. It's not too small, not too big, perfect for your desk or your shelf next to your military history books. Or you can give it away. We've made it as low cost as humanly possible, which is very hard when you're contracting very small production runs. Bink of Plushy costs $49.99, that's US dollars. Well, go ahead and treat yourself. Binkov has already made a video that touched upon J-20 production figures, as part of the overall Chinese Air Force procurement rates. That was roughly a year ago. To be frank, even back then there were some indications production rates for the J-20 could be bigger than we were comfortable estimating. But hey, better safe than sorry. With another year gone by, we can now say that indeed J-20 production figures do seem to be going quite high up, and very quickly so. For the methodology used, please refer to our previous video just mentioned. Back then, we said that by September 2022, up to three new brigades of the Chinese Air Force have been spotted using J-20 fighters that the units are getting new planes in batches of 10, and that most J-20 frontline units, once fully populated, end up having 20 or 30 airframes. J-20 full brigade conversion seems to require about a year. So far, using the trickle of imagery of new planes and dating them, the influx of J-20 over the years seems to have been greatly accelerating. By the end of 2019, some 40 to 50 airframes were made. The list shows specific units getting their airframes. After 2021, the delivery pace went up considerably. Indeed, 2022 saw three more brigades standing up. Further photos from this year seem to indicate the procurement is ongoing at an increased pace. By the summer, eight J-20 frontline brigades were observed using the type, on top of training units. Finally, a China Central Television segment mentioned that the 98th Brigade will be getting the type. When that happens, that will mark the 9th Brigade overall. Once again, not all those units actually operate as many as 30 or even 20 J-20s, as time is needed to fully convert the unit. The two tactics development and training bases are estimated to share some 30 J-20s between them. The flight test base at Yangliang usually has a few more J-20s observed. Most of the other brigades mentioned have 20 J-20s. Though some have been spotted with high unit serial numbers, suggesting those brigades have more. Like the 1st and the 9th Brigade. The 55th and 131st Brigade, having received 1st J-20s only months ago, are still likely at 10 or so airframes. That method of counting the unit serials gets us to roughly 210 or 220 airframes by the end of summer. It's not necessarily very precise, but there's another parallel counting method, spotting the much smaller in size construction numbers on various airframes. Those are harder to come by, being so inconspicuous, but occasionally photos like this one will emerge. Taken at the very end of December last year, it suggests 156 airframes were delivered by then. Number 7 denotes the 7th overall serial standard batch, following a pre-serial standard zero batch of 2016. From end of the year 2022 to August 2023, it's very likely dozens more J-20s were delivered, populating all those additional units. So the timing of that 156 serial also checks out. 
Possibly related to all that, around July 2023, rumors started that the milestone of 200 J20s produced or delivered had been reached. Of course, as with any rumor, that's impossible to verify, though milestones are more likely to somehow leak out. Another piece of, well, not evidence, but strong indication is the remarkable expansion of manufacturing facilities at Chengdu Aircraft Corporation, making the J20. From 2020 to 2022, they added some 0.27 square kilometers of large buildings. That's some 3 million square feet. And that comes on top of previous Chengdu facilities, which were already sprawling at over 4 million square feet. In the mid-2010s, Chengdu was making over 40 J-10 fighters a year, so these new facilities, combined with the old ones, likely rival the US biggest Air Force production plant building, the one in Fort Worth, making F-35s, which is 0.4 square kilometers in area, or some 4.5 million square feet. But even with the plant expansion, the single-engine J-10 fighter has likely been a victim of J-20 success. For some years now, no new units have been observed getting the J-10. So it's plausible J-10 procurement has been curtailed to make room for J-20, with only some J-10s being made for export. Anyway, knowing all this, a plausible production pace for the J-20 through the years may look something like this. With 2023, of course, being the production rate for the entire year, meaning a figure achieved at the end of the year. So, all those media claims that mentioned 100 or even 120 J-20s produced in a year are most likely wrong. The production pace has gone up considerably between 2022 and 2023. But even with the whole 2023 accounted for, it's likely not gonna hit 90 airframes, let alone 100 made in 2023. Or 120, as some of the most outlandish media headlines screamed. The 120 figure in particular seems to have originated out of nowhere, likely from some random internet forum. The 100 figure likely originates from a vague quote by individuals in China that J20 production reached a three-digit value per year. Though by looking at it more closely, one can surmise that the actual meaning may have been that the end of 2023 is when production pace might meet a three-digit figure. That means that the 2024 production tally might reach 100 airframes. That's their estimate, but we usually like to err on the side of caution, so we are unsure of the 2024 production pace. That being said, over 80 airframes made in 2023 is a lot. We're still talking about an advanced 5th generation fighter. For comparison, F-22 Raptor deliveries peaked at 27 per year in 2006. With some 187 production standard Raptors made, the J-20 surpassed its production run sometime this spring. Of course, the Raptor was a child of the Cold War. It was originally envisioned to be made in much bigger numbers, as many as 750 airframes, before the post-Cold War politics eventually cut its numbers. Now, just a short interlude, if we may. If you really love our content, feel free to check out our Patreon and our YouTube channel membership. Fan support is becoming more and more important in the deluge of various military-themed channels on YouTube. If you think our channel sticks out quality-wise, let us know. Anyway, while military comparisons should never really be done on one-on-one -on -one basis, the usually most talked about adversary the J-20 might encounter is the F-35. It is plausible that right now the J-20 is being delivered to China's Air Force in similar quantities per year as the F-35 in all its three variants combined was being delivered to the US DoD. The thing is, tracking F-35 deliveries has been much harder after 2020, when those figures were last published. Now all we have is overall deliveries to the US and other countries, as well as contract quantities for the US. The latter can be higher or lower than delivery quantities, as they precede deliveries by a few years. So they are not a good indicator on their own. 2023 deliveries to the US and other countries have originally been estimated by Lockheed Martin to approach 150 airframes. But 2023 also marked the point where a new variant of F-35, 
one sporting technology refresh 3 hardware and software, was supposed to be ready. As that subvariant is having issues working reliably, USDOD stopped accepting such airframes until the issues are ironed out. Specifically until December 2023 at the earliest, but possibly until April 2024. So the Lockheed Martin CEO recently said F-35 deliveries would max out at 97 airframes in 2023, with most of those going to US allies, as the TR-3 variant is for now ordered mostly by the US DOD. Basically the jets are being built, but reportedly 45 US bound F-35s, originally contracted for delivery by December, will be sitting at Lockheed's plants, awaiting modifications. It's likely that 2024 will therefore see a temporary spike in deliveries to US DOD after the 2023's drought. As for the longer term plan, Lockheed's CEO said the company still plans to deliver 156 planes come 2025 and keep the set delivery pace for the foreseeable future. Defense One News outlet said TR-3 models have been contracted to be delivered at a pace of 9 airframes per month. While that may mean over 100 a year, it's not assured said contracts are meant to be upkept in the future. While exact deliveries of F-35s for the US may not be known, procurement quantities are. 2024 plan calls for 83 F-35s. The 48 jets for the Air Force, with another 35 or so for the Navy and the Marines. That's the current annual procurement plan until 2028. So unless something drastically changes, these steady procurement plans will likely mean actual deliveries to the US will not be too much off at 80-something airframes per year. How likely is that F-35 production would go over 156 per year? The Pentagon said 156 is essentially full rate. August Joint Program Office notice said there is a plan to procure up to 780 F-35s from 2026 to 2030. That works out at 156. The Joint Program Office said those figures represent a potential ceiling and are not a guarantee of that many actually being procured. In the past, Lockheed Martin said that it could reach 220 per year with the current infrastructure if enough of an investment is made. But this April, Air Force Acquisition Chief Andrew Hunter said that Lockheed would be very stressed to produce more than 156 a year, and that it would probably involve paying for additional tooling, adding more shifts for workers and naturally finding and training additional workers. Hunter also said the center body component is built at Northrop Grumman's plant in California, where it lacks room to expand further. Turkey was supposed to make additional center body components, but Turkey was kicked out of the program in 2019. Currently, there are plans for Germany to start producing additional center body components. So, to get back to context with J20, its production may keep rising. As said, there are already indications that by the end of 2023 the pace of 100 per year may be reached, but there is no way to tell that for sure yet, or estimate if it will go even higher in 2024 and onwards. One key item that seems to be missing are signs of additional infrastructure and support in China's Air Force, like additional training bases, new pilots and so on that would be needed to support a near-future big burst to, say, 200 airframes a year. For now, it seems likely that the number of newly delivered J-20s will match US ones for F-35s, or go slightly over those, on an annual basis. Given the near-term issues listed for Lockheed Martin, J-20 is assured to out-deliver the US F-35s in 2023. But does that really matter? Right now, there are, as said, some 215 or so J-20s in China service. The US operates roughly 650 F-35s of all variants, as of September 2023. So right now the US F-35 count is ahead of China's J-20 count by some 430 or so airframes, with the US having 3 to 1 numerical advantage. If both China's and US procurement rates remain steady, in 5 years time we're looking at some 640 J-20s versus 1080 F-35s, or a little under a 2 to 1 numerical advantage. 
those numbers can of course end up looking somewhat different if China ups its production even more. Though at a certain point, if China reaches high enough numbers, the US would invest in getting more F-35s as well, despite all those issues mentioned earlier. But all those airframe counting thought exercises are beside the point. Yes, the more J-20s China has makes life harder for the US if it comes to a war. But if it does come to a war, geopolitics and alliances would come into play. It would not be US versus China, but the US and several other countries versus China. So then the current US figures would be joined by some 200 F-35s from Japan, South Korea, Australia and the UK. Future numbers would be bolstered by Canada and added deliveries possibly reaching 450 additional F-35s. Then there are US Air Force Raptors, which are just as potent as F-35s when it comes to air-to-air -air combat. Various other planes can serve as force multipliers. And not just the planes. As we said, it's never about plane versus plane, but the whole network of systems versus network of systems. So all the sensors, intelligence gathering, platforms, ships, ground-based air defenses and so on, it's about all those from one side aggregated against all those from its opponent. But comparing those goes way beyond the scope of this video. But let's just say that China as of now has some 2100 tactical combat planes. The US has some 3200. Australia, South Korea, Japan, the UK, Canada and the Republic of China, meaning Taiwan, are all likely to enter a possible future war on the US side, due to all the mutual protection treaties. Which would add another 1400 planes. So the US and its allies would then outnumber Chinese air forces roughly 2 to 1. Air power projection is a relative matter of course. So even with such a numerical disadvantage, China may still be able to defend itself inside its borders. But to project power even just a few hundred miles away from its shores, that's another matter. And with increasing distance from China, meaning shorter distance to US allies territories, no amount of J-20 is likely to pose an existential threat to US military interests. And if it comes to a real shooting war, and if that war lasts a long time, we would likely see the US taking over all the F-35 delivery slots for itself essentially building 150 plus F-35s per year for its military. Political ramifications of such a contract breach would be settled financially, as a few dozen billion extra to settle is a small price to pay when in war. Numbers are just part of the equation of the J-20 and F-35 comparison. China has been slowly making the J-20 better, first switching from Russian to Chinese engines, and recently maturing its next generation Wushan 15 engines, which will soon start equipping future J-20s. Other airframe improvements to J-20 were also visible, and it's a given that over the course of a decade, newer sensor and weapons variants will enter service. So yeah, an F-15 or a Super Hornet, no matter how advanced, would likely be outperformed by a J-20 one-on-one. But the US is preparing the next generation fighter to come online sometime in the early 2030s to replace those. And the F-35 is getting ample upgrades. New engine tech is planned for 2028 under the FAER program. New Raider, APG-85, will come equipping the future Block 4 airframes. That's what the technical refresh subvariant is for, to support all the future components. New optical sensors are worked on as well. And a brand new AMRAAM successor missile, the AIM-260, is just around the corner, possibly to enter service next year. J-20, in the context of the history of China's Air Force, is a giant leap. And its huge production numbers will complement its qualities a lot. J-20 may not be quite as good as US planes, but it's getting to a point where it's good enough. Still, it's just one small variable in the overall equation of balance of power in the Pacific. In the grand scheme of things, considering the thousands of potential enemy aircraft, even 100 J-20s made per year won't really make much difference for power projection outside of Chinese borders. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.